With that, we'll wrap up the budget portion of our town hall. And the second topic for our town hall today involves a collaborative process to develop online degrees for our students. This conversation will be led by our academic senate presidents as well as our college presidents. And the willingness of this group to come together and develop an innovative plan for online education says wonderful things about their leadership and also the culture of Los Rios. So uh, Deputy Chancellor and I will provide a little background as we segue to the second part of the town hall. Jamie? And I will be brief knowing this comes on the heels of a budget uh, presentation, but I appreciate everyone's attention and your attendance. Uh, so really there's an interest and there has been an interest for some time in creating 100% online programs in Los Rios with a focus on access and quality. Uh, as the college just started to do this individually, there was a recognition of the need for expanded GE course inventory to support programs. Also, really a recognition that we needed online uh, student onboarding and many other online business processes that we don't currently have, in addition to online student supports. Uh, we've also made a commitment as a district to have 20% of our online uh, course inventory up to the online ed initiative a rubric standard, which is a very high quality standard. Uh, so with all this work moving forward, it really seemed appropriate that we uh, start to have a little more intention around online, particularly for offering uh, fully online certificates and programs. So as we recognize that, uh, Chancellor King asked the college presidents and the academic senate presidents uh, with support of the Office of Institutional Research to envision uh, a more intentional and coherent approach to online programs with measurable goals. Uh, you'll hear momentarily that uh, this work has led to a lot of planning and some specific goals, but also uh, Los Rios College's online coordinating council. And the, the co-chairs of that council will be Torrance Powler, interim vice president of student access and online engagement. And also really pleased to uh, announce to many of you that we'll also I have Diane Peace, who has been a wonderful district curriculum coordinating committee chair over the past couple of years and a, and a real advocate of uh, good online programs, uh, also co-chairing that group. And uh, I'm going to turn it over now to the Senate presidents and college presidents to share a little more about that planning. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Yeah, we're all here to talk with you about collaborating to expand access through a new re-envisioned Los Rios Colleges Online. But before we do that, I want to advance my slide, okay. Um, frame the conversation a bit. We are not talking about a response to COVID-19. This is not in response to the current pandemic. It's not about converting remote operations this spring or over the summer or in the fall. This work has been going on and being talked about since well before the pandemic and it's gonna continue until after the pandemic. We wanna to talk to you about a new structure focused on faculty and colleges leading the way in online education. The new structure shared today will reveal increased college involvement the plans presented today are plans to strengthen and enhance online education, not to replace on-ground education. What we're doing and proposing for the future is new, so we don't have answers to all the questions, but we encourage you to submit your questions to the Q&A area of Zoom and the chat area of YouTube. We may address some of the questions today during the webinar, but we promise to provide additional Q&A answers after the webinar and continue to provide resources and communication as the project continues in the days, weeks, and months ahead. The panelists for today's webinar are the college presidents, Ed Bush at CRC, Thomas Green at ARC, Michael Gutierrez at SCC, and Whitney Yamamura at FLC. The academic senate presidents, Greg Beyer at CRC, Paula Haug at FLC, Lori Petit at SCC, Elisa Shove at ARC, and myself, Julie Oliver, the district senate president. And our two online coordinator council co-chairs, which Jamie already mentioned, Diane Pease, who's a Sac City College business faculty member, and Torrance Powell, who's at the DO as the interim vice president for student access and online engagement. So how did we get to where we are with all of this? Many of you may remember back in December, the 18th to be exact, we all 
stormed into the boardroom and sat down and we were ready for a presentation on online education. And that was labeled Los Rios Online, as it was called then. We listened to the presentation, lots of questions were had, and coming out of that session, it was decided we need to take a different approach with the project heading into the spring of 2020. So with the permission of the district, the chancellor, the deputy chancellor, we focused on a more college and faculty guided process. So since January, the nine of us, the college presidents, the academic senate presidents, with the occasional um, Betty Glyer Glover, the district office of institutional research director, occasionally joined us to talk about data in, involved in the process. We've been meeting multiple times each month to talk through what we would like to see for the future of online education in Los Rios. Where our focus is district-wide efforts to create fully online instruction and student services. And now, CRC College President Ed Bush will explain the why of our work. Thank you, Julia. I appreciate that, that framing of the conversation and also reminding us of the conversation that took place on December um, the 18th. Um, one of the things that was also abundantly clear from that December 18th meeting was the focus on equity. And during that conversation, while we may not have agreed on all of the equity implications on, our, on pertaining to online education, we were definitely clear that if we move forward and not put equity at the center, that we would have missed the boat. And so in our conversation and talking about the Los Rios Colleges Online, equity is at the core of our work. And we know that many of our students, particularly those who are low income, first generation, and students of color um, within online spaces are typically targeted by um, for-profit institutions. And we know the problem associated with that. Um, higher costs, um, less quality, that not only impacts the student experience while they attend the, while they are attending the institution, but it's likely to have long-term impact when we think about things like the accumulation of, of student debt through student loans. And so we know that we must disrupt that phenomenon, that we have to put ourselves in position as a district where our students who are most vulnerable have a viable solution to continue their education and continue that by the means in which they're seeking oftentimes, given the competing life priorities is around providing um, greater access to online courses, and most importantly, online uh, degree program. And you see even absent of a concerted effort that of Los Rios Colleges Online, that there has been a dramatic increase in the number of students who are seeking online courses. And you see before you the 24% increase that happened within the number of students enrolled exclusively online when we look at fall of 2015 to fall of 19. Um, so we need to make sure that we are in position to meet the growing demand that the students are uh, identifying. I mean, the term often used the students are voting by their, their feet. And this is probably appropriate where they vote, they're voting by the click of the mouse and looking to have greater access to online um, courses. And of course, while it was mentioned that we were having this conversation prior to the pandemic, I think we all are aware now of the inequities that are being revealed in many ways exacerbated because of the threat with COVID-19. And this really creates a sense of urgency around our work in this area to make sure that students who already are harmed structurally do not continue to be harmed um, as they're going through this pandemic and as we come out of the other side. Thank you, Julie. So we understand that there are a lot of concerns around student access to technology, um, access to support services, um, as well as students being prepared for online learning. So this, side, this slide kind of speaks to some of those concerns, and you're going to see the slide again later in the presentation, um, and Torrance is going to address um, some of these concerns.
Hi, I'm Paula Howard from Folsom Lake, and it's my uh, joy to present the challenges, the many challenges that our team faced as we uh, stepped into this project in the spring. Um, one of the challenges that we face is keeping this collaboration very much learner centered and learning centered, not just how we deliver our uh, information and our instruction, but the quality with which we deliver that instruction. As Ed mentioned earlier, equity is absolutely at the heart of what we are working on. And we recognize what an amazing opportunity this is, that we get to build something with equ equity in mind from inception. Um, and so we're, we're really working hard to take advantage of that and to see that come to fruition. Uh, it's very important to us that this remain a faculty driven process. Faculty should decide which courses are most appropriate to move into this modality and we are committed to keeping this a fully opt-in program for our faculty members. Um, also, as Julie said earlier, it is college-led. As the last bullet point says, it is very much a district supported effort and we greatly appreciate that, but it is the colleges who offer the courses and it will be the colleges who confer the degrees. So. We got this. And lastly, it is very important for us to keep an eye on data and not to be lulled into a false sense of anecdotal security. So we did bring our district uh, researcher and Gail Pittman from Sac City College in to make sure that we stay focused on what the true needs of this program are, as well as our true capacities in meeting those needs. So those are some of our challenges. And I think next we'll be talking about some of our goals. And I believe Lori from Sac City will be covering that. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Lori Petit from Sacramento City College. And this slide addresses our intent with Los Rios Colleges Online and also allows us to operationalize the outcomes we envision for students. So with the goal of effective delivery of high quality and equity centered online education, our work group also identified the following metrics of our intent. So as a result of this project, students will have access to fully online programs. The colleges have already been tasked with identifying multiple online degree options as a starting point for this one. After that, have access to fully online student support services. All areas of the online infrastructure are significant, but we recognize the unique complexities that this line item requires in terms of counseling, financial aid, DSPS, tutoring, and many other student support services. Also have the ability to complete an online program in a timely manner. We recognize the necessity of building our GE capacity in the online environment in order to meet this intent. And finally, since transfer is a primary goal for many of our students, we recognize that students need to be prepared for online transfer options, allowing for the completion of online bachelor's degrees. And with that, we'll transition out to the next slide and our next speaker, ARC College President, Thomas Green. Good afternoon. <laughs> and uh, wanna just start by thanking all the panelists. It's been a real pleasure uh, to work with all of you on this. And so I'm just gonna describe a little bit at a high level of the structure that we put together for moving forward with Los Rios Colleges Online. And I'll just try to start left to right and move through. So. Uh, as the chart uh, describes, the executive sponsors comprised of the College Presidents, District Ac Academic Senate President, and the College Academic Senate Presidents are going to actively champion the concept of Los Rios Colleges Online from the executive level. So the sponsors will regularly communicate the purpose, vision, long-term goals, as well as, and in tandem with the Chancellor's executive staff, help establish and convey the strategic direction to the Coordinating Council. Um, and then also the executive sponsors will advocate for appropriate resources to support the development and execution institutionalization of Los Rios Colleges Online and maintain awareness of the entire scope. Um, and as well, the executive sponsors may become actively involved to mitigate risks, mediate conflicts, and facilitate dialogue to resolve issues. So moving from left into the, the center, that is the coordinating council. And as the name implies, it provides overarching coordination of myriad efforts being pursued to achieve the strategic outcomes or deliverables. Um, the council is facilitated by a chair and a co-chair. And uh, that's uh, the, uh, Diane and um, 
Torrance as the administrator and faculty provide leadership to the initiative. And then membership is gonna be balanced by representation of constituency groups, student, staff, faculty, administrators, functional expertise, individual college representation, and the divisions within those colleges as well. Um, and the council is uh, going to actively work on those deliverables, or it may delegate them to one of the four collaboration groups as appropriate you see in those four circles on the outside. And if circumstances arise that require additional resources or expertise, the coordinating council may establish separate project teams. Now those four groups uh, surrounding the coordinating council are called collaboration groups. They consider issues related to that area of collaboration. The group's going to be a recommending body that forwards concepts and deliverables to the coordinating council for consideration. And each group is going to actively design or implement assigned deliverables. And it's going to also remain connected to the ongoing work of existing governance groups. There's a lot of work going on, so it's not to duplicate that effort, but to align with and support and help coordinate that. And then on the far right, you see those incubator projects. And it's really the incubator is a means to test and refine innovative concepts, supports, and or technologies can then be brought to scale within the Los Rios College's online ecosystem as a whole. And so at that, this is a good handoff to Torrance who's gonna to take it and expand on the current incubator program. Torrance. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, so going back to uh, the December 18th conversation, uh, and can we, can we get the next slide up? Thank you. Going back to the December 18th conversation, uh, you may recall uh, in the presentation that we gave uh, a discussion about some of the areas that we needed to focus on in terms of gaps that, that, that students had in terms of their experience. I'm sorry, can we go back one slide? Thank you. And so the conversation focused on uh, establishing essentially or identifying one program that we could really focus our attention on to further flesh out solutions and come up with strategies to mitigate uh, some of the gaps in services and to really, uh, you know, kind of try out and test the space of this, you know, Los Rios College's online concept. And that program uh, selected was the Business Administration ADT program at American River College. The, we started with a cohort of 80 students. Um, it has a fall 2020 start date. And we actually began the, the actual recruitment process and uh, the full launch of our Los Rios College's online website, which is, uh, you can find it very simply at uh, online.losrios.edu uh, on March 30th. And our cohort for that program is filling very quickly. Um, the primary strategy of this ADT program, this business incubator program, is on focusing on the strategies to mitigate some of the gaps in services uh, through really two positions, through ensuring that we have intense, robust support from uh, counseling to do you know, all of the normal work that counselors need to do and all of the uh, work that we really need to make sure needs to get done. And also the creation of a new position uh, called the success coach position, which essentially is kind of a, a fill in the gaps position. And, and, and we can jump to the next slide now. Next slide, please. Thank you. So as we kind of showed earlier, we you know, already presented this particular slide. And I think we know what the gaps in terms of services for online students are. Uh, these are things that we're very familiar with. We went over a lot of these, uh, these gaps on December 18th. Uh, access to on-ground resources, many of our services presently and prior to COVID-19 uh, were not easily or readily accessible to students in an online capacity. So if they didn't have the capacity to come into the you know, the financial aid office and get some questions answered, you know, it may take them some you know, extended period of time to get the services they need. Um, definitely concerns about student preparation uh, for taking courses online that's come up on this, this webinar several times already, uh, ensuring that students really fully understand what it means to take a course online, uh, the differences in taking a class online versus on ground, that they're equipped with strategies to be successful in a remote learning environment, uh, also, the sense of isolation, the fact that they don't have, you know, that physical space. They're not in the classroom with their classmates. Um, they can't, you know, walk up to the front of the class before or after uh, class starts to talk to the prof a professor. They need to, you know, come up with different strategies to be engaged. 
And then of course, uh, the access to and competency with technology, um, another equity issue if our students don't have uh, ready access to high speed internet or computer equipment necessary to take courses in an online capacity, how can we mitigate that? Can we go to the next slide, please? So the Los Rios Colleges Online concept is really, you know, a concept that is as old as school, right? It's the creation of a learning community, but a digital learning community. Um, being very intentional about ensuring that students have access to all of the support that they need, whether that be academic, social, or process support services, and that all of the, uh, the faculty, the staff, the administrators that are engaged in that process are working very closely and cohesively together to ensure that those students' needs are met. And you know, you'll notice that this is circular and there aren't arrows going out because uh, all of the folks within you know, that, that hexagon there have uh, the similar roles and responsibilities that you know, as a former instructor myself, I know that you know, sometimes we're, we're, I'm talking to students about you know, issues they're having with, you know, with administrative functions, with how they get their financial aid or, or how they get their DSPS services met. Um, really the idea behind this learning community is that we all play a role um, in, in these different elements to support students and success. And so the Los Rios College's online learning community is really seeking to you know, help further cement those working relationships with staff and faculty who are working in this digital space to ensure that our students' needs are met. And with that, I'll pass it over to Elisa. Hi, I'm Elisa Shab from American River College. And thank you, Torrance. I wanted to just remind everyone that what Torrance was talking about the work uh, is part of the incubator project. So all the things that we learn from this work in the incubator uh, will all be fed back and inform the work of the Los Rios Online Coordinating Council, the collaboration groups that Thomas already discussed um, and, that, and ultimately connected back to the executive sponsors, which are the college presidents and academic senate presidents. So we want you to see how um, well connected uh, all of these ideas are into a comprehensive governance structure uh, around this entire project. So moving on to our next slide. Thank you. So I'm just going to take a, um, a look with you at the strategic goals that have been developed for this coordinating council for the next year. So first of all, um, the coordinating council will help facilitate um, each college identifying a minimum of two programs for an integrated 100% online delivery. Second, we need to identify a shared GE pattern that allows for two year student completion. Facilitating an integrated training and development infrastructure for Los Rios employees is part of the goal. Aligning guided pathways approaches to student services support and academic support for our online students. And then finally, developing a comprehensive matrix so that we can evaluate our students' success in online programs. Our ultimate goal is that online success will be equal to or even greater than on-ground success. And so these goals, they're intentionally broad because operationalizing these goals is gonna be the work of the coordinating council and the four collaboration groups. And so, of course, as the, the new addition onto this slide shows, um, all of our work is always gonna be driven by data and with the goal of closing equity gaps, as has been mentioned before. Thank you. Sorry, little technical difficulties. So our next steps, uh, Diane and I have a lot of work to do. And that work is going to involve uh, several people on this call as we move forward to really framing out what the uh, coordinating council will look like, uh, ensuring that first and foremost, that the goals that were identified, the strategic goals that the, uh, the sponsors have created are in alignment with the specific committee 
Uh, there are five goals, and we've done an initial mapping of the five goals to the four committees. Uh, and now I think you know the next step is for us to really work closely with the executive sponsors to fill out the coordinating council to identify committee members um, and then to begin the work with the project charters, start operationalizing the goals and working down the list so that we can ensure we we uh, achieve the goals as outlined in the document. And at this point, that's the end of the content of our presentation. And we have um, Michael and Greg who are monitoring chats and questions, and they're going to hopefully field a few questions to all the panelists. Um, if appropriate, we will try to answer them. And again, anything we don't get to, we will answer in FAQs and, and other resources. I can get us started, Julie. This is Michael. But one of the questions that was asked is how can we ensure good quality and online courses in light of the budget cuts? I can take us one approach to that is that in one of the goals is that we have an opportunity to again to collaborate across our colleges um, in terms of our training and development infrastructure. Uh, certainly the kind of the remote operations in some ways there's additional barriers in other ways there's some unique opportunities to collaborate and so I think that's um, creating greater efficiencies in that collaboration around training and development I think is uh, one way in which we can move forward uh, in light of kind of the constraints we're in uh, and in addition to that as well I think that uh, these are part of the hard decisions that we need to make in terms of we do have to make investments um, in terms of supporting uh, quality and online education. And this is one where um, that's going to be part of that conversation. And I'd like to tackle, um, there are several questions in YouTube chat about <clears throat> the connection between this project and the California Virtual Campus Online Education Initiative. Um, and what I can say about that is each of the four colleges, when we joined the CBC OEI a couple of years ago, uh, we committed that 20% of our fully online classes would be designed in alignment with the CBC OEI rubric. So uh, certainly the commitments we've each made uh, to that project is there and that of course is part of this. And then in terms of the success rates of students that are, that are um, in our online classes, um, there was a great question asked about the growth in fully online enrollments. Uh, the students are only taking online classes what their success rates are. So thank you for asking that question. But we do know that from the first couple of years of the CBC's um, project, when, they, when courses are well designed and they're taught by faculty that are well prepared and the students are well served, um, that those uh, success, the success rates in those classes uh, get much closer to the average success rates in the um, in-person classes. And that data um, was uh, done by the research rather was done by the um, the RP group, which is a statewide research organization. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that that also is um, uh, controlled for all the various demographics and other uh, things that they control from the, in their research. So as we mentioned before, it is a goal of this project to increase the success rates of our fully online classes, but it's also a goal to increase access to the educational opportunities that we offer. I'll go ahead and take a take a stab at the, uh, how is this initiative going to be paid for in light of the budget issues that we just outlined? Uh, we offer these courses throughout the district. And this also speaks to another question in the chat. Uh, the business program was chosen in part because we have a lot of business faculty who have already opted in to online education and the course uh, inventory is there. So that program made sense as other courses or other programs uh, increase their inventory. And again, this is opt in. This is faculty choice. These are department decisions. Um, then those uh, programs will more than likely come online as part of this program as well. But these classes are already there in the online classes. If you watch, keep an eye on the schedule of courses, the online classes are very, very popular. Um, and so we're not having to cannibalize any of our on ground offerings in order to offer these classes. So I have another question. 
uh, there was concern about uh, the uh, ARC business program being the, uh, how it was selected um, as the pilot and also moving forward, how will this type of, uh, or how will the programs uh, be chosen so that it would not be, it will not be a competition? I guess I could speak to that a little bit. I mean, if you take a look at the uh, the graphic um, that showed the model of the coordinating council and the um, collaboration groups, those that's how programs will be will be chosen because um, it's not going to be a top down approach. It's going to be a collaborative approach where colleges have the opportunity to offer. A completely fully online program as opposed to um, being stopped from doing so. So um, we have a whole different approach going forward than than what was um, initially uh, created with the ARC pilot program. And we've also discussed as part of the these discussions and part of this program that um, even though a particular college might uh, shepherd a particular program, if, for example, a student needs a class and the classes at that particular college might be full, there's nothing preventing them, just as with our on-ground classes, there's nothing preventing them from taking that class from another college in the district. Um, and so we would like to see a situation where these classes are offered, uh, the pathways are clearly laid out. If a particular class fills at a particular college, students can be directed elsewhere in order to meet their degree objectives. And again, that speaks to the collaboration piece and not this uh, kind of staked out territory. This is ours. They take it here and only here kind of approach. There's another question on access to student services. Uh, will uh, any student be able to access the student services regardless of whether they're online students or not? I can feel at the beginning of that, Michael. Um, just from the context of the work that, that we're currently doing in the incubator program, um, our underlying objective is to identify as much as possible uh, strategies to serve students that are uh, scalable and can be applied broadly, uh, not just to future cohorts of online students, but to students who are on ground. And I think that the work that's been undertaken by uh, Melanie Dixon and the VPSS teams uh, throughout the course of the past few weeks has been very helpful in identifying strategies to serve students in creative ways, leveraging technology. So I'd say that we're well underway uh, already to, to helping service students and take some of those efficiencies and apply them more broadly. So here's another question. Would there still be a residency requirement at one college for the online degree? Yes, colleges issue degrees. So uh, the degree is housed at American River College and the students are American River College students. So those are all great questions and there's a few more in the chat we could probably get to, but we wanna be cognizant of people's time. Many of you have been on here since we started at 2.30 with the budget. Um, and heaven knows we all have a lot to do in this last week of the semester. So as you can see, the Los Rios Colleges Online program and, and the incubator project, we have a lot of work to do in the fall. And I'm gonna put it out there. If you're interested in this work, if you have a passion for it, you now know who the executive sponsorship team is, you know who the two co-chairs are, please speak up. If you're a faculty member, contact your Senate presidents, if you're a classified member, your, your classified Senate presidents, we are gonna need a lot of help in, in making all of this come true for our students and their success. So I don't know if Jamie or Brian, did you have any final words to say? I'll pass it all back. 
<laughs> I think our final words are again, just to thank all of our panelists. Thank you for the, the very informative discussion about online degrees. And thanks to everyone who also uh, presented on the budget. And with that, we will follow up with questions and keep the lines of communication open. And thanks to all who participated in our town hall meeting today and have a great rest of the day.